Hi everyone, this is Abdul. Welcome back. In this video, let's start playing with TensorFlow 2 by writing some code. I'm really excited about that and I hope you are too. So without a further ado, let's get started. I'm going to utilize Google's Collab, which I introduced in one of my previous videos, so you can follow along easily. So simply log on to collab.research.google.com and log in with your regular Gmail account. Now I will create a Python 3 notebook and simply rename it to the tf underscore basics. Great. Now you are good to go. First of all, we will import the TensorFlow library with the alias as tf. We don't need to install it manually because TensorFlow is already installed for us. That's the beauty of this platform. So to execute this block of code, we simply have to press Shift plus Enter if you are on a Mac. Or you can execute it by clicking on this Run button. When you are executing a cell for the first time in your notebook, it's going to take a while to initialize and connect a live resource for you. Technically speaking, it's using Google's Compute Engine in the backend. Great. So now let's check out the version of TensorFlow. I will print it as print tf dot dunder version dunder. Simply execute the block, and there you go. You can see that we have the latest stable version of TensorFlow library. The second important library, which is now a part of TensorFlow, is Keras, and that's going to be our focus for next couple of videos. In order to use it, it can be accessed by using the tf which we already imported, or we can import it separately by saying from TensorFlow import Keras. And in similar way, we can check out the version of Keras. So now let's talk a bit about variables in TensorFlow. Let me define a simple variable called t0, which is equal to the integer 33, and then another one called t1, which is equal to tf that variable and we will pass the number 44 and then another one called t2 which is equal to tf dot variable and we will pass two lists each of them have further two nested lists so totally we have four lists inside this variable now let me explain that before you start making your own assumptions the first one is a simple conventional python variable the second one is a TensorFlow variable, which can be defined by using tf dot variable. Conceptually speaking, it is a tensor of rank zero, or we can say one dimensional array. Similarly, the next one is the rank three tensor because it contains four rows and three columns in a row. So it's a rank three tensor. Let's print them out and see the result. There you go. You can notice that the TensorFlow infer the data type to tf.float32 for floats and tf.int32 for integers. But alternatively, the data type can be explicitly specified. So let's say we want to define a variable with the data type of int64. I can define that as i64 equal to tf dot variable and then put an integer value and then define the data type by using the d type parameter and set it to tf dot int 64. Great. Now simply print that out. There you go. You can see its data type is here. TensorFlow has a large number of built in data types. You can find them on the documentation page. One important thing you should keep in mind is that most tensor operations work on variables as expected, although variables cannot be reshaped. Great. The second important thing to understand is the TensorFlow constants, which can be defined by using tf.constant. As the name speaks for itself, constants are used as constants. They create a node that takes the value and it doesn't change. This function is not fundamentally different 
from tf that convert to tensor. The name tf.constant comes from the value being embedded in a constant node in the tf.graph. tf.constant is useful for asserting that the value can be embedded that way. One another important thing is that the tf.constant has no effect if an eager tensor is passed as the value. It even transmits gradients and it will create tensors on the current device. Inputs that are already tensors maintain their placements unchanged. Great. We learned two basic things in this video. The first one is the tensorflow variables and the second one is the tf.constants. That's enough for this video. If you enjoyed the content, thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will never miss any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.